Dear viewers, welcome to Sad Mira SSD. My name is Atim Sijin. Please do subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed to our channel. This is your only platform where you'll get to be informed on the most trending issues in South Sudan and across the globe. Uh, in the last few weeks, we have seen a lot of controversial statements being made online. And one story made South Sudanese online very furious. And I would like us to talk about it. And uh, of course, if you have not heard about the story, I will highlight it a little bit here. It was a few weeks ago when Angela Katatumba, a female musician in Uganda, sat down with one of the journalists to discuss about South Sudan music. And the journalist, or the wannabe journalist, kept referring to South Sudan as no talent country where musicians have no talent in music. And he mentioned that he had he watched some few videos on YouTube, but he could not see any talent in South Sudan, so they don't know how to do music and blah blah blah. And they were laughing it out. And this has made a lot of uh, you know a lot of online uh, uh, traffic across the country and beyond. And most of our South Sudanese came out to condemn this reckless statement from both. So, and I'm here to add my voice. Before I do that, I would like to give you some background about who Angela Katatumba is. And by doing so, I would like to mention some few things about her. Angela was born in 1975, and uh, she was the deputy consul to the Ugandan embassy in Pakistan. And her father was the consul of the same embassy in Pakistan. So when her father passed on, Angela Katatumba became the consul of the embassy, not until she was later removed by the president of Pakistan and someone else was appointed to be the consul. From there, Angela packed her things and came to Uganda. And in Uganda, she has been doing a lot of businesses. Of course, the father had so many businesses. So Angela Katatumba inherited all the businesses, the companies of her late father. And uh, as if that was not enough, she wanted the limelight, of course, so she joined the music industry at the age of 47. Because if she was born in 1975, by this year, she's 47 years old. Uh, she's qualified to be a grandmother, but still dating uh, some young boys in Uganda. So Angela Katatumba came to the music industry, and uh, she was unable to write songs. She was unable to produce music. And uh, she had to hook up with uh, Daddy Andre. And Daddy Andre was helping her to write songs. And of course, as lovers, he committed to make sure at least he support her music industry, her music career, and make sure at least she does good music. Not until Daddy Andrew realized that this could not work, and he moved on with another young face and beautiful girl of, of his age, and moved on. So when Andre moved on, uh, Angela Katatumba was left with no choice, of course. She could not write music for herself and uh, it became hard. So the only way she can make herself relevant in the industry is to create controversial stories. And this is not one of its kind. Daddy Andre, when they were in love with uh, Angela Karatumba, there were a lot of controversial statements. And when he moved on, I think Angela became so much controversial online because she's looking for ways to, to be relevant in the industry. And of course, if you cannot write songs, you better make your name you know, visible by creating a lot of controversial issues. And she is known of bad mouthing people on TV, on radio, and even on social platforms in Uganda. So it's not a surprise to see Angela Katatumba linking up with a wannabe journalist and talk shit about South Sudan music. That is it's not surprising people who who have known her background and who know that she's struggling music wise and she's looking for a cloud to make herself relevant. <coughs> so that being said I think we now know who uh, Angela Kalatumba is. Coming to the journalist, I am not sure that this person has ever gone to any journalist school or sat in any journalist class. Because if you're a journalist, you should know how to be impartial. You should learn how to minimize your opinion and make some research, you know, to base your argument on facts. But for this matter, there were no facts whatsoever that were considered in this story. I'm not saying that South Sudanese musicians are all talented. But it will be very unprofessional of someone to conclude that or to assume that all South Sudanese musicians have no talent. That shows how much that person has no ethics in his field of work. And these are two bunch of people from different backgrounds, from different careers, who are trying to make themselves relevant in terms of what they do, yet they have failed terribly. So Angela Karatumba has failed in her music journey. And this wannabe journalist, whose name is not even known, has failed in being one of the journalists in Uganda. 
And in this world of technology where we have phones and everything, it's easy for someone to claim that he or she is a journalist and make a video that is unprofessional, and that is it. So I think the story is not, uh, it's not about the industry, it's about chasing, chasing for the cloud <coughs> and making themselves look relevant in the industry in Uganda. So allow me to just say some few things about this story. You know, South Sudan is a market for East African music. I've been saying this time and again. And uh, most Ugandan musicians know that they have a very strong fan base in South Sudan. And they also know South Sudan is a very hospitable community. We can welcome any artist from Uganda with both hands. And they also have to know that in the industry in South Sudan is where you get to be paid a lot of money, except other countries where you cannot be able to get much payment as, as per the performance. And uh, the only issue with Ugandan music is that when they do music, they don't get enough money from their music. They don't get enough money from their shows. So the only place they can come and make money and be and, and be, being paid well is in South Sudan. So that being said, uh, most of the artists from Uganda are always here to perform. And uh, they don't go back to Uganda with less than $1,000. That is more than 3 million Uganda shillings. Where on, in Uganda will you be paid this amount of money? <coughs> so that being said, we are very sure that <coughs> Uganda Ugandan musicians know that South Sudan is a market for their music and uh, they also know that South Sudan is a talented. We have collaborations. Mr. Lengs collaborated with, uh, with uh, Jose Chameleon. We have Silver X. We have Lady Cola who have done a lot of collaboration with people like Cindy in Uganda and the list goes on. So this uh, wannabe journalist did not get enough time to sit down and do some research on our industry music wise but he based his arguments on assumptions. <coughs> And you know, anyone who, who base arguments on assumptions is not qualified to be called a journalist. And uh, what I can say is that if this Ugandan wannabe journalist is willing to be helped, South Sudanese have some great uh, journalists in the country who would love to, to, to hand out some help and train this guy. So if anyone is close to the wannabe journalist, please let him know that we are ready to train him on how to be a better journalist and how to, you know, to support your arguments with facts. Uh, just being said, I know we are here to clarify some things and I'm happy that most of our musicians came out and they condemned the fact that these reckless statements were made by a wannabe journalist. And also I would like to tell uh, Angela Katatumba to be very mindful of what she says. She's 47 years old and uh, her music is not taking her anywhere, so she's either, she should either focus on her businesses that the father left for her, or find other ways to make a living, because music has failed her. And at 47 years old, God knows what. And I don't know how long she will keep doing music in Uganda, because if she failed at the age of 47, uh, these are retirement age in terms of uh, any, any profession that you do. If you haven't made it up, up to 40 something years old, then the best you can do is to be an advisor or you know venture into other businesses that can favor you or there's no need for her to focus on music when she cannot write music so our advice is or my advice is to make sure at least angela katatumba find something else to do and focus on that because music has failed her so badly so also to mention you know this has has raised an eyebrow about our civic education how do we educate our neighbors about South Sudan, about South Sudanese? Until today, there are some uh, foreigners or our neighboring brothers who still call us Southern Sudanese. And uh, if this happens, and I'm very sure most of you might have heard, you know, us being referred to as Southern Sudanese. And this has been going on. Even some years after our independence, we are still being called Southern Sudanese. This is the highest level of ignorance that our neighboring countries are showing to South Sudan. And how do we go about this? We need to make sure we take it upon ourselves to educate our neighboring brothers and sisters on some basic information, some basic knowledge about South Sudan. Because as a South Sudanese, I'm very happy to be respected and to be recognized and to make sure at least I'm fitting in in the context of East Africa. So if you're outside there, South Sudanese, please do know that whatever that goes out there, like if there's any incorrect incorrect uh, statement that is being made about south sudan please don't hesitate to correct it because we don't want to live in the world of ignorance because south sudan is going through a lot yes but that doesn't mean that you don't have to learn about us i know so many 
colleagues from our neighboring countries who came to Juba <coughs> so many years ago. But until today, they are not able to change or to learn a thing about South Sudan. And uh, that is the most annoying thing that I've seen. Um, unlike us who went to East Africa, we have learned a lot of things from our East African communities. And uh, the same thing should be applied here. Like there's no need whatsoever. Any, any, any neighbor from a neighboring country should still be referring to us as Southern Sudanese. That doesn't make sense. And that shows how much people don't know about South Sudan, even those who live in South Sudan. You know, South Sudan has been a land, a promised land for so many people. When we got our independence, we opened our, our borders. People came in in big numbers. And most of them are millionaires right now. Most of them have businesses in South Sudan. Most of them are driving cars peacefully. And uh, it is a place that everyone comes to, you know, to realize their dreams. And it is a place where you can come empty-handed and you go back home driving. So, and some Ugandans were telling me that South Sudan is our, is our America. Where you, when you want to go make money, you can come to South Sudan, make your money and go back home. So we need to make sure at least you don't only come here to make money and go back empty-handed. But you have to come here, make money, and also learn about South Sudan. And learn to refer to South Sudanese in a better way. Learn to know what are their cultures, what are their norms, and so forth. So my brothers outside there, do make sure at least you are our ambassadors. You know, make sure you educate one person at a time can change the narrative. So like for myself, I've encountered a lot of people who still refer to us as Southern Sudan. And the best I can do is to correct it. Because we are not Southern Sudanese, we are South Sudanese. But some of us will just say, ah, it is normal. And you let it go. So let's not take anything for granted. Because of course, if such things happen, we won't be taken for we won't be taken seriously at some point. So it is good for us to make sure we show that we need to to be respected, and we also need to be known who we are. And South Sudan is a very rich and diverse community. We are very blessed with a lot of cultural, uh, you know, strength, cultural beliefs, and you know, very good cultures across the country. And we need to sell that outside there. So I have been to East Africa, I was in Kenya, I was in Uganda, and wherever I am, anytime I get an opportunity to talk about South Sudan, I have to you know, give an, an image of South Sudan that no one else know outside there. You know, we shouldn't be known for negative things, but also let's try to sell our positive side of South Sudan. Let's try to sell the best of South Sudan outside there. And uh, for Angela and the wannabe journalists, I will tell you that South Sudanese, South Sudanese are forgiven you. And uh, we know you are doing this for cloud. We know that both of you have failed terribly in your respective careers. And uh, looking for cloud won't help you. So better, for the journalist guy who wants to be a journalist, you better seek trainings on journalism and be a better person. Of course, I know you can be a better journalist if you, if you do that, if you do the trainings. If you look at the video, this guy was more concentrating on negative part of South Sudan. And uh, this guy has no knowledge about South Sudan music industry. And uh, he just, if you look at the sitting, even the body language, he want to impress Angela Kadatumba. That was it. And he didn't even mind whatsoever what ethics of journalism he would have applied. And he didn't even get time to go deeply and dig more about our industry. Watching videos on YouTube is not enough as a journalist to make a conclusive statement on certain things. You would have done a diverse research online to know about South Sudan and the industry. Otherwise, you have failed the, the, the media fraternity in Uganda. And we will say sorry. We will, uh, we will really we are sympathetic with you because you don't know what you are doing. We hope you will learn to do better interviews next time. And uh, South Sudan is a market for your music and for your, your art. And uh, it is always said, don't bite a finger that feeds you. I want to just say a statement that was made by our, pres our, our first uh, president of the Southern Sudan part before independence and the, 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 the movement leader, may his soul rest in peace, John Garangri Mabior, when he was asked by journalists that uh, now that you are getting your independence, and uh, now that you're getting your, your, you are signing the CPA, and South Sudan will have, Southern Sudan will have a chance to decide whether to be part of Sudan or to break away from Sudan. If you break out from Sudan, where are you going to start from? Because your young country is starting to grow. Where will you start from? And the world has moved on. And Dr. John said, we're going to start from the place, from the level where the world is at, at the moment. And that's where we started from. I don't think Southern Sudanese, by then, before independence, were not willing to start where the world is. And now as a South Sudan country, as a South Sudanese, I'm very sure that South Sudan has grown with the world together. 
that not that doesn't mean that we don't have challenges of course we have challenges but it doesn't mean that you know we are not talented in any way we have seen our basketball team that did very well we have seen our own kickboxing champion who beat Golola Moses very badly in South Sudan and we know Golola Moses very well in Uganda is this kind of person who have terrorized the whole of Uganda and when he came to South Sudan for a competition with our kickboxing champion Majov he was beaten badly and he went back to Uganda without a word. He did not say anything and he went quiet. And we know how Gorilla can shout. But uh, that would not make a big deal out of it. We didn't say that Ugandans don't have talent because Gorilla Moses was beaten by, by Majo from South Sudan. No. Golola is one of the best kickboxing champions in Uganda. But as well as, uh, you know, sport is concerned, we managed to beat him and we, we won the, the bell from Uganda from, from Moses Golola. So all these things contribute to the fact that we are growing together. There are some things we do good, there are some things you will fail. But it will not be com concluded that, okay, all, the whole Ugandan or the whole Uganda has failed, or the whole South Sudan has failed at some point. It doesn't make sense like that. So this just being said, I'm very happy that most of us reacted. And I want to shout out to people like Lady Kola, people like Dynamic, the Sudanese child, and most other people that I will not mention that stood up and condemned these reckless statement with all terms possible and I would like to say that uh, let's move forward and support our own people let's support our music industry and let's sell out our, uh, our, our, our image as South Sudanese let's look at how we can you know change the narrative people don't know about South Sudan let me be honest even those who are living in South Sudan and they have come, they have come from the neighboring countries they need to learn more about South Sudanese and this is our own you know responsibility to tell them about us you know, like the, the, the beat I'm putting on, it has a meaning in my culture. If someone asks me, I will have time to sit down with him or her and explain to him or her. There are some things we need to tell our, our neighboring communities that they don't know about us. That will give them a better mindset of who we are than just basing their, you know, comments on assumptions. When someone lacks information, they will make wrong decisions or wrong comments or they will have a very conclusive statement that will not reflect who we are. So let's also learn to, you know, educate our neighboring colleagues on who we are, what do we do, and how best do we do some things. Of course, that will help them to understand who we are. And it will help to minimize such kind of negative statements that are made with no reference to any facts whatsoever the case. Thank you so much. My name is Atim Sijin, and please do subscribe to our channel and support SiteMira SSD, your only platform where you get to be informed on the most trending issues in South Sudan and across the globe. Thank you so much. And please, South Sudan, not Southern Sudanese. We are South Sudanese. And for any... Uh, colleague from the neighboring country that's watching this video please do learn about South Sudan take time to ask we have very good people that don't mind talking to people and you know we have interacted with you a lot we have so many conversations and uh, don't be uh, scared to ask if you don't know and we'll tell you South Sudan is growing and uh, just like another new country that has just come out of war we have challenges but nevertheless we are putting ourselves together we are picking our pieces together and we are building this country and your support is well respected and is needed but your undermining of the situation can be taken for granted for the wannabe journalists please do apologize to the people of south sudan for angela katatumba you are 47 years old you have no music please focus on your businesses and do best maybe in other things but not music may god bless you